Welcome to Radio Antioch. This video is an outreach of Antioch Tabernacle Ministries. I want to give you a mental picture. Sometimes the spirit is willing and the flesh is weak requires you to take some action. Anybody ever see in the cartoon where the main character is going to do something and a little devil pops up on their shoulder and says, do this. And they're like, ooh. And you see the look on their face and they're like, yeah. And then the little angel pops and says, oh no, don't do that. That would be wrong. Okay. Anybody ever seen that? In fact, I've seen that in many movies. And you guys are all nodding your heads. And yeah, yeah, we've seen that. I mean, I've seen it in cartoons. I've seen it in movies. Um, sometimes it's pretty funny, the little dialogue they put in there, right? Well, that's actually a pretty good picture of what's going on. Because your spirit wants to do the right thing and is speaking to you. Okay. But your flesh may be tired and may be going, oh, man, I am so tired. Some of you may have a battle getting here on Saturday nights. You might be tempted to fall asleep, you know. It's like you want to come and worship, but, gee, you're tired. It's a long week. Well, I am like that all the time. Spirit is willing. Flesh is weak. Okay? Sometimes if you've got a temptation, it's like quitting smoking. You know, I know, I know a guy who quit smoking recently, and it's like he wanted to quit smoking for a long time in his head. But then there was finally the day where he got where he could do it and has successfully done this. But most people who quit smoking, they go through a couple of misstarts because their spirit is willing, but their flesh is addicted. Okay? So those tuggings going on, and then your mind makes a choice. Okay? So if you're going to quit smoking, you've made a mental decision that you need to quit. But your body is telling you, I need the nicotine. But your mind makes a choice to either get out the cigarette or not. In fact, most people throw away their cigarettes, then the mind makes a choice whether to go. And, uh, you know, one, one, one brother I know actually got his hand on the door of the store, you know, like the, the convenience store, and then turned away. But he was wrestling in his mind. It's like, this time I can really quit. Okay, well, so your mind, you're in the middle here, you know, you've got these two sides. And so that, that little picture with the devil and the angel is actually a pretty good representation as far as Hollywood goes of, of the battle of the mind okay because you've got this battle between what's the right thing to do and what's the easy thing to do or what your flesh wants to do sometimes it's sin you know the temptations of pornography and adultery and things like that you've got your flesh going oh this would be fun or this would be attractive and then you know the part of you saying but it's not godly or what about the covenant with your husband or the covenant with your wife you know, you've got, you've got the, the, the conscience telling you, hey, this is not the right thing to do. And yet the, the part of you that likes sin is like, hmm, this would be fun. Nobody would know who'd really be hurt, right? And so you're having this argument. I don't know if any of you have ever had a temptation like that, but uh, these temptations come. The same temptations with pornography, other temptations where you, you feel the temptation there. Now, I remember back in the charismatic renewal back in the 70s and 80s and all this and all the charismatics any of you were part of that remember how everybody used to bind the devil okay now we still pray and bind the devil here but you know back then it was like okay if if people weren't coming to church well, we'd bind the devil because he's keeping them from coming to church or this happened you know when you know there's nothing wrong with that because a lot of times there is enemy action okay but it was it was almost comical back then uh, I want to give you a thought. Uh, a, a Christian leader that I think a lot of, a guy named Graham Cook, commented that many churches are not really effective enough to have any real demonic opposition. If you think about it, just the flesh of the people with their gossip and their backbiting, or they get mad and they don't pay their tithes, or they get mad and leave and move to another church, in most cases, just the flesh of the people is enough to cause trouble in a church growth. Okay? And you don't really need the devil to come against you. And in fact, the, the only ones I think the devil messes with are the ones that are really making a difference. And the churches that are just basically taking up oxygen, uh, they, you know, I think the devil doesn't mess with them because the people's flesh does all the damage that needs to be done. You know, backbiting, people not paying their tithes, or they come against the pastor, cause church splits. That's just sin and flesh. A lot of that may not be the devil. It just may be people who need to get their flesh in line. Okay, so sometimes you need to stop the stuff before it gets going. Okay, so 
there's that point when you first realize the tension. Anybody ever been tempted and there's that point where you realize that you're tempted and you feel the tension between your conscience and the temptation? Anybody know what I'm talking about? And there's that moment where you realize, I have a choice to make. Well, here's a thought. Make a conscious decision that next time you have a temptation between doing what God wants you to do and the temptation, knock the devil off your shoulder. Just knock him off. Say, shut up. Okay? I'll give you an example. I'm trying to stay more consistently in the spirit so that I'm able to hear God on a more consistent basis. And there are some things where I'll start to get annoyed with something or maybe I'll, I'll want to watch something on TV and I'll feel the Lord kind of nudge me like, not right now. Okay, and then I, it's like, okay, I, ha if I have to stop right then and be obedient or I'll be in the flesh. You know, and it's, or, you know, how, how many of you have ever started to get mad about something and you feel the little nudge of the Holy Spirit of, you know, you need to just pray. And if you do it right then, you don't get mad at your wife, you don't blow up, the house is calm and cool. All right, people nodding all over the room. Okay, but at that moment, if you make the wrong decision, then you yell at your husband, you yell at your wife, everybody's mad, the, t the kids are crying or hiding or whatever, and the house is messed up for a week. Okay, there's that moment of tension. And so one of the thoughts I would say to you is knock the devil off your shoulder. When you, when you recognize the moment of tension, learn to recognize the moment of tension between what God would have you do and what your flesh wants to do or what the devil's trying to lie to you. Sometimes it is demonic. Sometimes temptations come, particularly like for adultery and things, they're demonic. Okay, a lot of times there's a spirit of lust involved, somebody trying to, to come in. And when you feel that first moment of tension, take a choice to act. Okay, same thing with weight, okay, or quitting smoking or anything that you're doing where you want to change something this year. Okay, it doesn't matter what it is. I'm just giving common examples. You know, part of the thing with our internet audience, I'm thinking of things that people would be wrestling with. Not saying that anybody here necessarily, you know, has a weight problem or anything, but if you think about the things that people wrestle with and why they fail, well, here's, you know, here's the examples. Okay, the first thought when you learn to recognize that tension when you first realize that, that there's a tension between what you should do and shouldn't do and, and think about the picture here's the angel and the devil, well knock the devil off your shoulder, if you break it at that point it's easier okay, if, if someone's got a drinking problem you know, the time to knock the devil off your shoulder is when you're driving home from work and you've had a bad day and you're thinking I ought to stop and have a beer in the bar and just relax, okay the t after you've had three beers is not the time to start talking to God about your drinking problem, okay? Now, and I was a drug addict, so I, I had a couple of bounces before I got drug free, but there were points where I had to make a decision to quit using drugs, and I had to pray to God and say, Lord, if you'll help me, I'll give this up, okay? So I've been there on some of these things, but there was the point of recognizing and successfully passing that temptation. There were times in the few weeks after I quit for the last time where the opportunity presented itself, because everybody I knew was doing drugs, okay? So the opportunity presented itself, and times before I'd quit for a few days and then I'd be back, you know, and I'd, I'd, I'd crash again. But there came a time where I reached the decision point between do the right thing or do the wrong thing, and I did the right thing. And every time you do the right thing, it gets easier, okay? This is an interesting thought. Every time you do the right thing, it's easier the next time. And so pretty soon, it's been years since I've used any drugs. Okay, so these are things I'm giving you to think about. Every private victory like that where you win makes it easier the next time. Thank you for joining us today on Radio Antioch. You can visit us on the web at www.antiochtabernacle.org. This video is made possible by the generous support of viewers like you. If Radio Antioch has been an encouragement to you, you can help support us by donating online on our website or by mailing to P.O. Box 741, Antioch, Illinois 60002. Donations are tax deductible in the United States. Thanks again and may the Lord richly bless you.